do. Uh, I don't know if they expected to be here, but this is a very different stylistic composition from them. They did Fortress uh, games much earlier in the spring season, so maybe bringing this back online is, is going to be a good thing for them. But you have to say that uh, Baboons, they have the upper hand. They've got the momentum. They've got the confidence. So, Okay. So in the game we go. What do you think, Jaws? How are you feeling about this uh, specific matchup? Any uh, gut calls from these uh, drafts? I just want to see if Dienzio can pull it off. I think I think he will probably go Crystal Power route. I mean, there there isn't that fin to kind of stack up of, but the thing is, it worked so well against him that I kind of think that he wants to prove that he is the better player in that sense mm -hmm. and prove that it maybe is a kind of counter matchup and go, yeah, okay, I'm going to win this matchup. I'm going to pick Crystal this time and I'm going to show you how it's really done. But at the same time, I think Erwin going, you know what? You can play Scarf all you like, but again, I'm the better Scarf player. I think it really does come down to the kind of mechanics in this sense and who's going to out lane who or at least out team fight and out position because Erwin definitely had the upper hand last game. Dienzio did not really stand a chance. But Slater is on his classic Arden. Very something to fear of. Yeah, very something to fear. I mean, at this point, you're basically looking at a, uh, a matchup where if Scarf does take off, it's going to be kind of difficult to shut him down. The Vanguard, the Gauntlets, the stuff, these are all great uh, peel items for uh, for scarf the difference in the in the last game when immortals played scarf was that all of their appeal items are, are basically just they're kind of like all sedentary but this is a very mobile peel composition coming along online for los baboons so a bit of a different take but still the same type of carry so excited to see what Erwin decides to do. If he makes it the late game, gets his items, scales up, if he maxes his ultimate, there's nothing but an afterburn to stop him from using it. And that could be Whoa, all the okay. difference. Speaking of afterburns, Erwin finds himself on the wrong side of that one. Aloha actually taking a lot of brunt of that damage. Is there is going to be here just to uh, chase off, to be generous? He did actually sub in, by the way. I think you forgot to mention that. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Sweet J, uh... uh didn't even didn't even realize. Didn't even realize. That's bad. Sorry, Sweet Jay. We see you there. Okay, hey. so uh, it's better for, let's be fair. Two best of fives we've had today. One game went to best of five. One game went to went to just three games. And this is a possibility right now. Calling in the substitute in Sweet Generous, the tactical mastermind that he is. Will we be able to pull Immortals to victory? That is the question. Lost the Moons match point right now. All to play for. I'm super excited about this one, man. Because Owen. Uh, I've seen him on the Vox now. I've now seen him on the Scarf. Like you said, a bit of a different take on Immortals' composition in the second game and uh, with a bit of mobility from the Vanguard from the Arden. That's it. I mean, we're looking at uh, a composition from each side that can make it happen. It's just all about execution right now. The first gank attempt didn't go quite according to plan from Aloha, but uh, we do see... You know, a bit of a just tiny bit of a gold lead is going to close out a little bit as these last hits come through we got a pretty big wave crashing into immortals here but this next wave will return crash back towards the uh, side of los baboons actually going to go share a little gold in the jungle here which is uh, pretty common at this time of the game when uh, no one really has a lot of push potential and you're able to just kind of send your roam up to uh, deposit but uh just looking to scale this scarf, right? Like, this is the goal. We, we need to get to the mid to late game with this scarf. Grump John Arden, certainly going to allow you to do that. Lots of early game pick potential, lots of peel potential, and just flat out a ton of damage coming out of this uh, Grump Jaw. We actually saw Yuzaru use Grump Jaw to some great effect before uh, in an earlier game this season. So, excited to see him on this pick again. Oh yeah, most definitely. And uh, one thing I want to point out real quick as well, DNZO is going the weapon power build, it seems. Got, uh, got those weapon power items in his inventory. I mean, not going the crystal build here, you know, doesn't want to match exactly what happened in the last game. But Owen, maybe a relief of pressure for him. I mean, those resonance bounces really did hurt DNZO in the last game. In fact, Jizaru just taking a lot of damage there in the bottom lane. I didn't really see that at all. This Slater is going to be there to just vanguard him. Sweet, generous, and Aloha. Just pushing ever forward in. That vision is uh, very, very key for them, Immortals, now. They need to be able to find these pickoffs. 
and uh, that's exactly what Aloha is good at doing. Yeah, I think I definitely think it's smart to do the weapon power path from Vox this game. Just too mobile of a composition coming, if, you know, no fin to splash off of, no guarantees there. He, Lance has some mobility, but still not as much uh, as this Arden with all the vanguards, and of course, splashing around the gauntlet walls doesn't always work very well either. So I, I like Immortal's focus here. I like their style, going for that Sorrow Blade on Zeo, getting some cooldown on this glaive once again though we need to see some picks come through Gla like we don't want uh, to see complete scaling uh what's kind of interesting is that while grumpjaw will lose some as of effect in this late game what i'm curious to see is if they'll be able to just prioritize eating the uh fortress and then just come out and melt down one of the other two members with this scarf before any fountains can be used uh, so something to, to, to be aware of there will be interesting to maybe even see if a secondary fountain is prioritized just in case. It is one of the better ways of dealing with Scarf's ultimate in the late game, getting a couple of fountains. Looking for those picks. Yeah, they found one, they found a pick onto Slade. He's easily be able to retreat back with that Vanguard. It's not the pick off you want to, well, not the afterburn target you really want to find. Slater can just afterburn, uh, sorry, Vanguard away. It's very easy for him to just get out of dodge very quickly. Afterburn yet again onto the Scarf this time, Erwin. Once more using those boosts to get away and a lot of damage traded up onto Sweet Generous. He's going to have to back off rather sharpish. Scamper off. As uh, once more Lost Baboons just not really deterred whatsoever by Immortal's advances. Yeah, that's actually a big win for Los Baboons. Two pick attempts that didn't go according to plan. They even got the boot active out of Glaive, so he's not going to have the ability to quickly gap close. And they're going hard on this turtle. Looks like they're actually going to get it. Oh man, Dragon's Breath used as well just for the secure, but Aloha is going to be on the sidelines here. Oh, he's in a lot of trouble right now. Yuzaru does get punted back into the team, but it's not going to matter because they're going to be able to disengage, or at least you'd hope so. Erin uh, gets a hold of that Vanguard from Slater. That's going to be one kill traded here for the turret. It's uh, worth in my books getting that added extra pressure. They're 1,000 uh, 1, in the gold lead uh, in their bank right now as well. Immortals only falling ever so slightly behind, but you've got to think, Lost Baboons, you saw what they could do last game with even the inch of an advantage. And that's exactly what they're going to go for again. Slater's... Uh... Put on the uh, boot active there just to get some damage down on Vox. Once again, just trying to flex his muscles, show his dominance. Don't think the Scarf ult was quite necessary to kill that turret. Does way less damage than just shooting another Spitfire or fanning your flames and being able to get out. But you know, it's okay. He's got nothing else. He's probably going to use it on too much right now other than the utility. Scarf ult early games, kind of like Celeste ult early games, pretty underwhelming, but gains a lot of power as you get closer and closer to uh, level 9 and 12. So we'll have to see how Immortals handles losing their objective first. Gold mine down, turret down. We've got uh, a little bit of a gold lead, but uh, not too much. So the game still stays pretty even. Teams can kind of relax a little bit. Zio's got 3,300 gold. Probably drop that in the bank. Get yourself something nice with it for the holidays here. As I imagine, Starblade will come online. Maybe even a breaking point path here. Actually, he's just going to go ahead and get that infusion. So they're looking to fight pretty soon. He is indeed. I mean, I wouldn't drop my money in the bank if you want to spend it. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. But I can see where you're going with it. Attack the back is going to get popped. Erwin trying to kite back right now. Vanguard used on him and it's packed and afterburn used on him as well. That Dragon's Breath is going to come out as the Gauntlet does get laid down. But Vox is going to be able to pick up one kill. Dienzi are in a lot of trouble. They're going to be able to chase him up. In fact, I think the Island's just going to be able to pick up that kill. A trade one for one so far. One for two, in fact. Aloha does afterburn over the wall. As they're trying to chase them up now. Mortals finding that beautiful pick onto Erwin to send him packing. Just pick up the uh, broken myth though. So we'll be doing a fair bit of damage and the infusion to boot as well. So even Harvest and Broken Myth and Infusion are in his back pocket right now. He's going to be doing a lot of damage, but again, that's the kind of picks they want to find. Three kills on the side of Immortals now. A bit of a surprise too, right? Uh, they uh, kind of caught them in the jungle there with an Infusion level 6 on uh, on Vox. So a nice, a nice pickup for them there. So I think uh, you know, Los Baboons will want to shake that off a little bit, kind of rethink. We see the Infusion in the pocket of Erwin here, so just uh, getting ready to use that whenever it seemed necessary. But yeah, just gotta be careful about some of those pick potentials here. We do have a little bit of uh, posturing towards the uh, 
the front here, but of course, gold pretty even. Uh, nothing, nothing to uh, shy about here. Maybe just a reflex block worth of difference. We did go into the war treads for Slade instead of anything like a crucible or whatnot. So they're going to have the ability to either engage or disengage quite quickly. But they're going to need that because Fortress, Fortress has some strong engages. And if Glaive and uh, Vox get on top of the scarf, that's bad news bears. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, you saw exactly what happened last, uh, last, last engagement. Is there a... Uh-oh. Hang on a minute. It does Dust Forge uses the Hangry to kind of get out of there, but it's not gonna... They're not gonna be finished just yet. Slade's gonna come through with the Vanguard. He's gonna be able to save his life uh, when he's on the wrong side of this wall right now. Slade's trying to find something. He's trying to find his escape. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Dragon Breath over the wall, though. Earn doing a lot of damage. That Gauntlet's doing a fair bit as well, separating the team. And now Erwin's gonna be able to kite back with the help of those war treads. Only just making out alive as the rest of Lost Baboons do reconvene. And uh, somehow, no one go... <laughs> somehow, no went down. I can't say I, I agree still with the use of this Scarf Ultimate. I think uh, I think Erwin's getting a, a little too ahead of himself. It's just the damage just isn't quite there. The BM is online, so once he gets enough stacks, he gets level 9. He has level 2 ult now, so when you get level 2 Scarf Ultimate, Dragon's Breath, once you get around that 5 or 6 BM uh, stack range, it actually does pretty notable damage. Um, but until now, definitely probably would have been better off just to continue shooting some Spitfires, dropping some goops in there. But everyone lives, everyone walks away. A little bit of a gentleman discourse there. Uh, although, to be fair, Los Baboons did have a fourth player in that century, which I'm sure Immortals were like, hey, that's not what we agreed on. Yeah, we wanted the clean three on three, not the three on four. Yeah, what are you doing back there? That guy, uh, he hurts. Yeah, he's got a massive pickaxe. Although he does swing it into the ground, it makes little ripples in the ground. That's a lot for some reason. It it, it hurts quite a bit, <laughs> especially if you're uh, if you're getting targeted as like a box. You don't really have a lot of defense uh, stacked up yet. Still going for those offensive items does more damage there. But the shiver still pick up from uh, Sweet J here. They're really looking to try to shut this scarf down, get on top of him so he cannot kite cannot get away uh, but as we uh, come close here to about 12 minutes got uh, quite a few items coming online and fusion pocketed by zaru here no one fusions pocketed but we do have one ticking on zeo so they're still looking for the fight but this reverse gank path here this could be a big deal this could be Owen. He's found himself Dienzio. Just use the boost to get away. The Vanguard as well, giving him a nice shield and speed boost. Corner comes down. Actually, that's going to be really big. Owen is on the right side of that one, but Slade is not. Ends up getting taken down in his own gauntlet. Something he didn't want to happen whatsoever, but it does mean Owen survives. Lost Baboons are going to be able to back off here, but I can only imagine that's going to be Immortals taking that turret. They might have found Yazura here. They just go really aggressive. In fact, ignoring the turret completely. They're going to want to look for more kills. So Crystal Sentry is going to be there as well. The Dragon Express is going to come through. Is it going to be able to kill Dienzio? I think it is. Crystal Sentry is still wailing away. It's sweet generous. you got to be careful there, buddy. That burn damage is too much for him. Owen picks up the kill. Aloha, the only one surviving for Immortals, ended up being a two-for-two two trade with Slater only just respawning. And that is exactly not what they wanted to happen. Uh, Scarf uh, ulting at the Crystal Sentry and uh, keeping the game together. I've seen that somewhere before. It's definitely something that uh, you got to be careful about. When the Scarf gets those stacks and he drops the ult, we're, not, we're only level 10. The damage is high. Vox was a little too low be contesting there so immortals biting off more than they could chew in that moment and try to get this gold mine oh it eaten instead oh, hang on a second yeah he just gets eaten instead does use it on aloha aloha is actually going to use that to his advantage though as he does afterburn towards erwin erwin doesn't have too much energy left to him slater and yazura are just going to have to back off rather safely afterburn's still available from aloha here didn't want to follow anybody else up they are just going to get the recalls off frostburn being finished and an infusion picked up for erwin He's going to pop that into his infantry. He can use later. Turret still looking mighty healthy, though, Fuji. Still not giving that one up too early. Lost Baboon's doing a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, this is really important for them because the longer they can keep these objectives up, you know, the quicker distance to safety they have, but at the same time, you know, the less gold in Immortal's pockets. So they're trying to increase this gold lead. The, the bit of danger, though, is the longer the game goes on, if there is a big team fight win 
for Immortals. They can clean up a quick two turrets, which will be quite a big item swing. So definitely want to keep your turrets, but you definitely want to make sure you start chipping down the enemy turrets a bit more too. So creating a bit more of a gold lead for yourself so they can't swing it back in their favor. We do have Gauntlet online. Got some extra pierce here on the Scarf. Level 11, getting closer to that level 12 mark. We'll see whether Erwin prioritizes his ultimate or goop to max. Then Vox now with that Poison Shiv, looking to cut down on some of the healing potential in uh, Barrier received from Vanguard. The biggest uh, thing here is just kind of making sure Slater doesn't get caught out, doesn't take too much damage up front. Kite out those wolves. Spitfire hits. Aloha, it's gonna find her. Win Dragon's Breath on the corridor, though. That's not good. That's not good at all. That corner is just gonna trap them all inside it. Not exactly what they wanted whatsoever. Immortals on the run. Aloha does have to burn away, but Sweet Generous is on the side of Lost Baboon's jungle. Monkey in the jungle, they're gonna chase him down. Not too much of an issue. That's another kill for Erwin. Four and one right now on this scarf. Who's the better scarf player? Fuji. I think uh, Erwin is definitely making his name on the fold right now. Whew! I mean, what did, so they did, they ate Fortress. We talked about how important it would be if you can eat Fortress and just burn the other targets down before Fountain can be used. But they even did, they did something even better. They ate Fortress and then landed the Gauntlet on top of Zeo. So all Zeo could do was just sit inside of the Dragon's Breath. That's pretty insane. Like, just the fact that they're able to synchronize that together. It looks like now that they're able to win that team fight, Scar's actually going to level up his goop. This is going to give them more siege potential. So he's going less for the team fight with the max ultimate, more for the siege potential with maxing goop, damage the turrets. So this is going to be pretty important to them. Got to watch out for this uh, top bush here. Oh yeah, Yuzuru, a little bit of the wise there. Attack the fact is going to get bobbed. That's a big sign. Well from Dienzio, the wait for it. They're going to have to wait for the damage though. As uh, Erwin is going to be able to kite away without too much of a problem. Dienzio are going too far forward after burn away onto Aloha. And this is going to be disastrous for Immortals because the Kraken is still knocking on their turrets. Aloha is so close to going down. Only just ends up surviving. Lost Baboon still running down this lane. Immortals, they are not looking so hot right now. They need to be able to find an activation point for this win button. They just cannot seem to find it here, Fuji. Another turret does end up falling. Dianzio is going to spawn here. So Lost Baboons, are they going to want to continue? That's the question. Like they're just trying to skirting out. And uh, yeah, they do decide to actually just disengage. Yeah, they, they, they can taste sweet, sweet victory. But at the same time, Lost Baboons... These guys are executing with Kraken pushes great. They they understand their limits. They understand how many turrets they can get. And they seem to understand exactly when they need to back out because Kraken's effectiveness has kind of gone down. It's not worth getting ace to return. There's a lot of standing gold on the map for immortals to take if they win a team fight. But once again, the execution coming out of these guys, they're eating Fortress. They're dealing damage to the rest of the team. Fortress can't fount and Fortress can't use his items effectively enough. Sweet Jay has to start blocking. He has to start blocking these 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 stuffs with his Crucible or like he can't use Crucible to get out of Gauntlet. That's Glaive has to take care of that himself. If he gets eaten, they are losing every team fight. Team fight could be on the horizon here as Lost Baboons pushes up towards this lane. I mean, one of the big things I'm noticing at least is um, Dienzio just dashing forwards. And it does look like Lost Baboons are waiting for Immortals to engage because they know that's Immortals' win condition to get on top of that scarf. They kite back. They use the zone potential from the Arden, from the Grump Jaw to then re-engage with the Gauntlet and the Dragon's Breath. And then Dienzio, by the time he's up and near Erwin to do damage... The broken myth stacks are on like eight, you know, six to eight plus, and uh, he just gets absolutely obliterated and just melt, literally melted by the dragon spread. Yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty dire for immortals. As this game goes further and further, we see the metal jacket now sitting on Erwin. It's going to really deter any kind of dive damage coming out. Aloha just not able to really get in position to knock Scarf where he wants for this Vox to dive him. Uh, but I, at this point. I really think Aloha has to save his afterburn to knock Suijay out of Grumpjaw's belly because these, like, not having Fountain is really hurting them in these team fights. But Los Baboons, once again, 
setting up a line of scrimmage, kind of daring Immortals to fight, looking to grab this Kraken if they let it, but this is a tense, tense moment. Everything on the line in this game for Immortals. One team fight could be the difference between their VG8 seats going over to Los Baboons or not, so they have to have confidence, but they have to pick the right fight too. Yep, Slater, maybe looking to find Dienzio here. Attack of the Pack is going to get popped. Erwin left completely alone once more. They're going to jump on Dienzio. <gasps> Perfect corner as well. Dragon's Breath comes through. That lands on the three people. Dienzio is the way for it. But is he going to survive it? I don't think so, because Erwin's going to be able to pick up that kill. Immortals, this is their last and final stand. Aloha, the lonely man. The lonely man at the tiny, tiny gate that is Immortals. And just the amount of pressure that Lost Baboons are putting on that is just absolutely immense. You can see them now walking it down the lane they're in the base of immortals could this be a 3-0 and just take them out of the VGA I think it is this is going to be three VIS challenge battle teams now Fuji that are going to go through to the VGA it's kind of insane when you think about it this is it like immortals drops Vogue drops or it's just I can't are they gonna hold what they're gonna I hold? Think, hang on, they might Slater. just it. A couple more hits, I don't know. Slater, can he do it? A couple more chunks will do it. He pops the crystal. No! He doesn't make it happen. Ace comes through from Immortals. We just leapt quite high in the air, Fuji, and we just came crashing down as the game's not over yet. We just get another chance to hype up a potential ending here, but they hold on. It looks like they're gonna rush straight to Kraken here. They did get the ace buff. The minions are pushing to the turret, so this is a chance for them to turn it around. That being said, a little greedy on that potential finish there for Los Baboons. If they just keep it calm, they have a great defensive composition for this Kraken. They're going to be able to shred the health quite easily with Scarf. So as long as they don't get picked, they can still come back. But Immortals, they're looking for the turnaround. They're looking to say, like, no, we're bringing this to another game. We're not ready to give up our seat. So we'll have to see how does this push go. Other teams have not done very well with Kraken today. So, Immortals, can they change that? Can they be the one VG8 team to show how to use a Kraken push effectively? We'll have to wait and see. Owen's going to be able to turn that one down. Aloha looking for something, looking for an afterburn on the sidelines. Dienzio doing a fair bit of damage to that turret as well. Attack of the pack is going to get popped just to make sure Lost Baboons are just held back. Aloha does afterburn over the wall here. Kraken's still going fairly low. Dragon's Best going to get cornered up here. Gorner goes down, just goes a little bit wide, but they're going to chase down Dienzio. He's going so, so low, but they can't find a kill just yet. Aloha's on the sideline, still very low as well. Does punt Irwin straight into the team, but Dienzio's kiting them around. Gazura and Slater doing a fantastic job. Then they find one pick. The Kraken's going to be knocking on their base doors, but I don't think it's going to matter because this is the final time maybe fuji we can get out of our seats now because they're just pushing on this base with sui generous the only member alive to just try and defend them now they're running towards it they're going to probably be able to take it out and i don't want to hold bait of breath but i think they've done it 3-0 lost baboons take out immortals and they replace them in the vg8 three challenge battle teams have now taken spots in the vg8 in na Whew, this has been an insane series, just like the last two, Rogue Falls, then Tribe Falls, and we think Immortals might have what it takes, but then they fall in a 0-3 and three fashion too. These Challenger teams, they weren't joking around. That last team fight, everything that needed to happen came to fruition. They had a great gauntlet, great Dragon's Breath that really sped the team up. Crucible to block. So there was no stopping of that. And then once they got the one pick, the one kill, they just walked down victory lane and took their spot in the VGA. Congratulations to uh, Los Baboons. Not, uh, not monkeying around, not today. Wow, guys, what a conclusion to the spring season. I don't think any of us could have predicted at the start of this season. Not one person. You know, we look at it starting all the way back in California in Los Angeles when we had that exciting, actually, I'm sorry, that was San Francisco. When we had the exciting invitational, all these exciting teams coming in to the Vanglory uh, fold. Some of them picking up players that I think we all can agree have been playing at the highest level for a long time. And then to kind of just see 
it ends like this for a lot of these teams. Now, granted, this is not like they're out of vainglory. Like they're just down into a different, you know, step in the competitive ladder. But, you know, it is something I think a lot of these teams just looked at. The vainglory eight is kind of like where the top team should be. And so it's like a, it's a status symbol, really, is to say, hey, you you are up there. You're, you know, and also it's the best chance to make it to the live championships, the, the coveted, I think, prize that a lot of these teams look for. But it was a stats to be in that top eight teams, and now to be out of it kind of makes the perception feel very, very tough on these teams that have, like, you know, worked so hard all season. I mean, it's it's a tough way to go, especially with such a kind of a bright start to the year for a lot of these players. But, you know, you, you can only right. blame yourself, the amount of work, the amount of focus you put in, your ability to kind of come together as a team if you don't pull it off and the other team does, you just have to you have to bow your head. You have to like bend your knee and say, you know what? Good games. You guys did it. You deserve to be there. Uh, no one else uh, no one else caused it. So it's tough. It's tough to watch these teams fall, but not to take anything away, obviously, from the just the great performance, the climb through the Challenger series, the, the very tough climb for some of these teams, not all of them coming through the winner's bracket, playing tons of games to get all the way to the final three. And then for all three teams to show up today in a big way, that's uh, it's pretty nice. It, it, it's, it's nice to see just new talent, new players breaking into the scene and proving that. Uh, you're, you're just, no one's safe. Nobody is safe in challenge battles. <laughs> That's definitely been the storyline this season. And it's been an exciting season from the very, very top. I mean, Vanglory, it's been a very exciting. And then, of course, down here in the Challenger Series as well, it's been just an incredible uh, entire uh, storyline to kind of play out in front of us. And, of course, it's not over yet. We do have the live championships in London, the first unified ones uh, taking place. I think, Fuji, you will be there as well as you, Jaws. Uh, so it's definitely going to be exciting to sit back actually for once and watch you guys, uh, kind of take the helm, uh, without actually being there, be a little sad, a little heartbroken, uh, but, uh, it's definitely going to be, uh, an exciting, uh, exclamation point to this season. And of course that's it for us at the challenge battles though, for this 64, uh, this is our last broadcast of this season. Oh boy. Well, it's been a pleasure, man. Like, it's, these games have been so hyped today. Like, I just cannot believe oh, yeah, the three has. teams. It's such a massive storyline as well. Like, three teams from the top of the VIS coming through and then replacing. I mean, there's so much new blood coming into VIS. It's very exciting. Yeah. What's interesting, though, is Immortals actually will be at the live championship, the Unified Live Championship. They typically perform much better during those live performances, but then... To come back home and know that you'll be heading back down to Challenger is definitely tough. I think really Fuji and Jaws, this speaks to at least here in North America. And it's somewhat true in, in EU as we saw uh, a few Challenger teams make it in over the last two splits. Is It's been an incredibly you know uh, exciting season of new talent. We've really seen, uh, I think, the, the the old wisdom of all this talent being in the top organizations. A lot of this came from, you know, making sure that, you know, uh, only one org per, per um, only one team per org, as well as only five members per roster. These major changes have really balanced the competitive scene, the competitive landscape as a whole. So I think that's those changes have really uh, been felt here as we look at challengers and uh, the whole Vanglory competitive scene as a whole. Agreed. Felt today. Felt. Into, uh, watching in cast. So. Well, that's it, guys. Nice yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, it's been a long night here. Uh, it's 10 p.m. over on the East Coast. Uh, getting late. Uh, I know for Jaws, it's pretty late for you as well. But it's been an exciting cast. I want to <laughs> thank all of the casters that have come out. Thank you, guys. I mean, Fuji coming in here uh, for your first. Uh, I think it's the first cast all season here at least for this and then of course jaws is always uh, tasty bacon four core dowsy humanist all the guys uh casting these games here are coming over and helping out uh at the vis uh, desk been appreciative all the teams and of course our moderators uh it's always been very much appreciated all the help we get here with that guys we are going to say good night we will see you guys next season and make sure you tune in into the unified life championship in a few weeks good night
only $14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band.